Evergrande Crisis Beijing not likely to let developer collapse, even as it gets tough, analysts say. Beijing not likely to allow property giant China Evergrande Group to collapse as the government devises a way to get tough on the company without inducing sector-wide turmoil. Uh, market analysts said at a conference on Wednesday, Evergrande saddled with more than $300 billion in debt, has missed three rounds of interest payments in three weeks, uh, and will default on its debt if it fails to pay the combined $119 million in interest before October 23rd. So we're we're coming up on that uh, pretty quick here, uh, you know, in, in just a week week away. Uh, I think somebody in the comments uh, in one of the other videos was saying I think I think they were saying it was October 23rd or 28th or something. Maybe it was yeah, maybe it was October 28th. Uh, was oh, I can't get my calendar come up here uh, is where the the issue is uh, really going to to take hold. Uh, what the government is doing uh, is this kind uh, wait what the government is doing is this kind of a managed reconstruction that is trying to scale the property market away from any further debt fueled growth by not bailing out Evergrande. Uh, said Andrew Collier, managing director of Orient Capital Research. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, do you have questions about the biggest topics, trends? No. Uh, his remarks came during the China Institute Executive Summit, the CIES, on Wednesday. The South China Morning Post is, is a strategic partner of the event. Uh, they are desperate to avoid a central government bailout wants to have its face on the picture of helping out the property market. Oh, it says, that, yeah, adding that the he didn't think China's central bank wants to have its face on the picture of helping out the property market. Uh, yeah, so, I, you know, I, I'd like to think that there's enough people that are smart enough to not let this uh, just, you know, let it fall apart. And, and let it dissolve and be like, well, you know, that's that's what you get, right? That's what you get for um, having having all of these uh, indebted companies and, and capitalistic companies that are leveraging what they have and, and all that. And look, to a certain extent, I, I don't totally disagree. Uh, having you know three hundred billion dollars in debt uh, is is a lot, and there's a lot like you know a lot of people uh, around the world are are counting on that to not you know default and to not fall apart and to not go for pennies on the dollar, but uh, if if at all. So I, I hope that you know it, this isn't uh, this isn't going to be a problem like I keep saying in every video you know let's not let's not panic just yet but uh you know it's not necessarily a bad thing to keep keep cash on hand in case things do head south if they things head south you have the cash to get to take take advantage of some buying situations and you know and I, I'm not going to be the one to tell you which which buying situations to to do uh but I you know I I just think that as an overall strategy you know that's that's what I would be looking at is is you know, how can I get some cash off to the side so that I could make some purchases if things do go sideways? And if not, well, then, you know, cash is still available to do other things with it. Uh, this other update, China uh, C-Bank official says spillover effect of Evergrande's debt woes is controllable. The spillover effect of China Evergrande's uh, group's debt problems on the banking system is controllable and Individual financial institutions' risk exposures uh, are not are not big, a central bank official said on Friday. Chinese authorities are using Evergrande to step up asset disposals and the resumptions of projects. Um, Evergrande had blindly diversified and expanded its business. I don't know if it had if it was blind. I, I'm sure that there, you know, somebody was making a decision based on what where to put the money. Uh, last month, uh, as they the debt crisis intensified, the PBOC, uh, I'm 
as I said, it would safeguard the legitimate rights and interests of homeowners. In August, the central bank, as well as the banking regulator, said they had summoned executives from Evergrande and asked them to properly handle its debt risks. Uh, those comments... Financial institutions' appetite for property firms has declined significantly in response to risks at some, uh, at some developers, leading to a significant drop in loans. Evergrande should step up asset disposals and speed up resumption of projects, buildings, uh, building and authorities will provide financing support for project resumption. He said some lenders have had misunderstandings about the central bank's debt control policies, causing financial strains for some firms as, uh, as some new projects are unable to get loans even after firms have repaid existing loans. Uh, so what that says is that the bank uh, is, you know, the, the banks that they're trying to get the money from is like, yeah, like, yeah, cool. Like you, you paid on that loan, but we kind of see the landscape of where things are and we're not really that comfortable right now. And we're going to take a more conservative approach so that we don't go down with you if things uh, start to, you know, uh, go belly up. That's the, that's not a great sign that definitely you know pumping the brakes on the loans means business can't continue as usual and it could ultimately lead to if if uh if they're not able to get the loans that they need going forward and fund those projects and and other banks you know decline them as well it kind of puts them in dead in the water if you're a development company and you can't develop because you can't have you don't get the money to do so um you know, the profits probably aren't going to be enough to be self-sustaining uh, for you. That's why I mean, that's why they're going to the bank in the first place. Right. So I I uh, tend to think that hopefully that's just a short term. Uh, somebody said this is a uh, in the finally it says the short this short term extreme reaction is a normal market phenomenon. It is. And, and like I just said that you we want it to stay short term. We want it to, you know, maybe. Maybe it lasts 15 days. Maybe it lasts, uh, you know, 45 days at most. But I, I would, I'd be worried if you start getting past 30 to 45 days. When we start talking about like 90 days, like that's not a, that's not a short-term phenomenon. That starts to be like a, re a real money crunch uh, that could topple over more co uh, development companies uh, in China and and start to. Uh, really affect what we got going on here in the States.